Hello, Tom. How are you today? Thank you for asking. No one ever asks how I am, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, they should. Thanks, buddy. It's a good icebreaker, I think, don't you? Know, you? I think it's a good way to start things <laughs> off. <laughs> and let me, let me say further that you, you appear visually very similar as you do in the literature in the uh there was a large life size banner yeah with you uh photograph of you yeah you know uh sort of uh it seemed life size it was that kind of thing anyway you do appear uh whatever it's just, it's just, oh yeah i look like that guy you look at yeah. that you know axe throwing we got that up for the staff to practice the axe throwing mm -hmm. you know when they get when they get their rage in they can just come out here once I go home and throw a couple of things at it. Well, you know, every 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 corporate structure's <laughs> got to have their thing. I believe in the Japanese corporate world, they go out and they what they they drink, right? They go out and they get drunk, yeah. And you get to insult your boss, yeah. Right? That's the that's the cliche anyway that, here, I, that I've heard. Yeah, here. Throw axes at me. Okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds very Canadian, if you don't mind my saying. Yeah, yeah. And maple syrup comes out if you hit me right in the <laughs> well. right in the temple. Uh, nice to see you. Can you? Uh, I, I was looking at your set list for the Pixies tour you're on right now. <clears throat> Charles, you're doing forty songs a night. They're ditties. They're short. You know, don't don't give me too much credit for that. You you're, know what you're, I mean? you're Bruce Springsteen, man. You well, are. No, yeah, no. no, they play three hours, <laughs> over three hours, with you know whatever. We don't we don't have any breakdown raps or anything. You know, we don't have any. Saxophone players. We don't have anything. We don't have. A, we don't have a lot of shtick. That's for sure. I mean, and I got nothing against shtick, but we're just not any good at it. You know, we just like, you know, Joey does a little shtick when he does the Bombos guitar solo. It's like an anti-guitar solo thing he does, and that's developed uh, over many years. But that's about it as far as the shtick is concerned. I mean, I think what else? What other shtick do we do? I mean, we we take a bow at the end of the night. That sometimes we go through them. This little uh, ritual, little, I suppose. Little song you know. and dance for that, for but sure. But that's about it. You know, we're not yeah. real good at that. The encore itself is a bit of shtick, hey? Don't you find? We don't even do the encore. We finally just stop doing that. We just like you stop faking it. We just don't even do that. We just we either walk off, or we go up, we take a bow, and then we pretend like, oh, do you want to play one more? Sure, we don't play one more. We do this whole little like yeah, kind of like Three Stooges routine, and then I'm like, Dave pretends it is. Hand it hurt hurts and but maybe if he could magically make it better. Like James Brown with the you cape, know, you know, it's like a little bit of that. Yeah, you know? it's a yeah. little dorkier than that, but yeah, you know. I've always, I've often wanted a band to give up on the encore, just to be like, you know what? Here I it is. hate doing encores. Oh my god, I hate it. And then it's just no one ever real. I mean, it's been many years since I've actually really heard an audience really ask for one. I mean. I don't know. Shouldn't they be supposed? They're supposed to be ripping the place apart, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that way it's supposed to be? Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. The only time I ever heard one that I thought was earned was when they went out and did one song. You know, they did, I can't remember who it was. It was the band called The Secret Sisters. They did one song, mm. and the band, the place went so crazy, they came back out and did it again. Right. Well, that's a real encore. You know what I mean? They again, were like, that's they were what like, it means. Encore. Play it again. Play, play it something again. again. Yeah. Letterman used to do it. Letterman used to bring <clears> bands <throat> out and get them to play it again. I mm -hmm. kind of dug it. How are you finding touring these days? Like, how are you finding touring at this stage in, in the Pixies' life? You mean as sort of like middle-aged people? Well, you know, I was talking to Flea. Yeah. I <laughs> sound like Larry King. Yeah, Flea told me. I was talking to Flea, and he said that, you know, back in the 90s when they first started touring, there wasn't as much green tea and brown rice as there is now. Yeah, I suppose that would be true uh, with us uh, as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I mean, you know, we we uh, we survive quite well in the the touring bubble um i don't know uh it's very dull i mean in terms of the day-to-day -day, yeah but we like it that way yeah and and then we then there are little reward is the is the show you know that's that's the, that's the thing that we look forward to occasionally we look forward to a meal i suppose you know but um beyond that i mean you know it's like doing laundry. Go to the art museum sometimes. Yeah. Check out a coffee shop or something like that. Well, the coffee shop, that's the one to check it out. It's like, where the f do we get a coffee right now? Like, yeah. now, you know what I mean? Like, we have like coffee going on all day long, right. all night long, and right. before the show. Coffee, 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 a lot of coffee. I had a lot of coffee before I came here. I mean, a strong one anyway. I made it. I was this whole, like, you know. 
You know that I want coffee when I'm like I'm using the hotel coffee. You never. A good I sign. never like never I used to be sign. more of a snob, but now I'm just like, no, I'm not going to use this stupid like receptacle thing that I can't figure out how to fit in the thing. I just like I just tear the thing open to get to the coffee grounds, and then I make this kind of like pour over Japanese style pour over. Oh, okay. Thing, you know what I mean? But you're not making it in the in the in the weird hotel kind of coffee maker or anything like that. Just what? No, just over the cup. You know right. what I mean? Just like yeah. you know, just pour the I had to, you know pour the hot water over the thing and let it drip and you know use all the coffee available so that it's strong enough. You're one step away from just putting the instant grounds in your mouth and pouring water in and just shaking it. You out. know, I mean, you know, I mean, I got, you know, I want to get a little pleasure out of it. I'm yeah. just, you know, I'm not. It's not like purely drug. Yeah. But I mean, you know, so I like the ritual of the, the sipping and the sitting and not the bitter taste or not not necessarily bitter, but you know, the the strong taste of coffee. Speaking of the pleasure of it, mm. are you getting? Do you have a Do you have a moment on stage? Honest to God, though, mm. do you have a moment on stage where you go? Man, I've been doing this for a long time, and there's still an awful lot of people coming out to hear these songs. Do you get do you get that moment of gratitude in there? Uh, no. That that's too like that's too complicated of a thought to have midstream like that. It's yeah. just like I often describe it as the kind of thought you can have as the plane's about to land and you can't use your phone anymore. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's it's just definitely uh, more. Uh, you know, uh, it's a little more egotistical than that. When you, I mean, I'm in the freaking limelight. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be like, I'm, you know, I've got so much gratitude right now for the beautiful people. Up. I mean, no. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be like, hey, man, I am, I am, the, I am the fucking guy. Of course you're here. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> look, yeah, look you who you're know, dealing with, for God's sake. You know, I gotta, I gotta get an ego stroke somewhere. You know, what I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, we don't demand it. We don't demand demand the adoration but hey they're there they paid the money that's nice you know, they paid the money i mean you know we try to do a good job don't get me wrong I know. Like, you know we don't screw around up there yeah you know play it in time you know what i mean we try i gotta talk sing it in tune yeah you know belt the heck out of it you yeah. know what i mean and if it's a if it's that kind of, you know whisper the heck out of it if it's one of those kind of moments right yeah you know, we're trying we're trying to emote here yeah you know we're trying to give everyone their money's worth we're very aware of that i want i would actually want to talk to you about that a little bit later on but i don't want to not talk about the record so can you play a song from the record come a devil call me friend but call me blackjack cool again i came all the A little of the song Catfish Cave from the new Pixies record Beneath the Eerie. I'm speaking with the frontman and main songwriter Black Francis. I heard this is this is a story your dad told you when you were growing up. Well, yeah, it's part of a whole series of of stories from uh, about this character, a Black Jack Hooligan, who's this kind of Scottish kind of ruffian character, kind of quasi criminal, quasi hero. You know, in the kind of 1800s, usually, it seems like, as I recall, most of those stories. Some of them in the Wild West, some of them in Shanghai, some of them in back in Scotland or yeah, somewhere. Yeah, a, a lot of them around here, those kind of stories. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but anyway, he had a girlfriend named Catfish Kate, and there's one particular story about Catfish Kate and how she got her name, you know. And so, uh, anyway, I was all jammed into a corner looking for a lyric, and, you know. At the se at the session there, and I still didn't have a lyric on this particular mu musical shape, and everyone kept bugging me about it. So I was like, "All right, fine. You want a lyric? Here's a lyric." So, sure. I I, I just uh, catfish Kate. All right, let's do sure. catfish Kate. See how yeah, it comes yeah, out. yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's cool that that got stuck in your head. I find it interesting. I listen. I I know you did anthropology in school. I did folklore in school. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting when stories like folk stories like that stick stick with you in your life. Well, you know, I mean, you know, even popular music. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of, uh, 
it's a form of uh, oral tradition, right? It's like a, or it's a cousin of that or something like that. It's an offshoot of oral tradition, right? It's like even even a, even a band going out and playing their most popular songs in a in a set. It's like we okay. You guys all have this reference point. You all have this record that you bought back in the day. And here we are in a personal appearance, and we're all going to revisit that, those songs or that, those moments or whatever. We're gonna, we all know how it goes. It yeah. goes a little something like this. That's, that's something nice about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's old. It's uh, whatever. It's, it's uh, ancient. You know, that's, that's, that's oral tradition. So, uh, you know, folk stories are the same way, uh, oral tradition. And, uh, Did your dad tell you a lot of those kind of stories growing up? I mean, not. I don't know if he told me a lot, but I mean enough that I, you know, I've told the same stories, you know, to my children. You know, I mean, half of them you make up, you know what I mean, on the spot. But then there's a few that kind of stick around. I thought, oh yeah, let me tell you the story about Catfish Kate. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, certain stories, uh, they, they, you know, you got to remember some of them, and then you can you can make up ones based on the ones that you remembered, you know, and. Uh, you know that that I mean, that that's that's how that's how things uh, build right yeah. over time. That's how they snowball. That's how they collect whatever. That's how they collect things along the way. Addition and subtraction, they call it. Yeah, taking okay. taking stuff that makes sense for the society that we live in right now. Yeah, taking away, adding in stuff like that. Taking away stuff about Milner's that doesn't make any sense anymore. Right, right. I understand. Totally, totally. But it was nice to hear. I heard, I heard a lot of that. I mean, the last thing I'm going to do with with you is try to tell you what your record is. But I heard a lot of that on the record. I feel like I heard a lot of these, you know, sort of narratives on the record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't know what to say about that. But... Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. I just don't have a, I don't have a pre, I mean, I didn't, whatever. It's, I don't know. It's not, I don't know. It's not by design or whatever, or it's, uh, I don't know. I I'm kind it. of just react, you know what I mean? I'm just kind of in the, a little bit in the moment, you know. I'm just, you know, in the Chinese zodiac, which is also a misnomer, you know, I'm a snake, you know. Yeah, what is, what is the Joey snake in mean? the band, he's a snake too. What does that mean? You react in the moment. It's like you don't really, you're not real good at having artistic vision. You don't look down the road. Yeah. You don't look in the past. You're not up in a tree like yeah. a monkey. Yeah. You're down on the ground on your belly. You're feeling your way. You're either biting something or you're yeah. running away from something. That must be frustrating because I, I can imagine people listening. In fact, I know people who listen to your records, you know, at these kind of precious moments in their lives. And I'm sure they create all kinds <clears throat> of narratives about, about what you must be talking about. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, that's okay. You know. Sure. I, I think I frustrate, you know. People that are trying to interview you because they so tell them you know they I don't know you know what I mean like half the stuff that people ask me I'm just like I don't know man I don't know I mean I'm willing to talk about it. I'm willing to like yeah. let's play armchair armchair psychiatrist or psychologist to hear um, you know well I could do psychiatry too I guess I don't know what kind of drugs do you I think I don't got the kind of pills for, me, for that you know? I don't got anything like that I got, I got a cup of coffee is all I got okay well that's about <laughs> where I'm at right anyway but I get that listen I, I think that people I, I think that music can mean a lot to a lot of different people I'm going to psychoanalyze myself I think music can mean a lot to a lot of different people people can feel a lot of things and we can try to imbue things that aren't necessarily there music itself can be kind of just a thing you do you know you know, you play, you get in a band, you play, a, you sound, play a song. That's what, that's what it is. Well, I mean, you know, there is that sort of simplicity. Yeah, I think that's what I like about you. What? When you talk, when you talk about music, I feel like I often hear you say stuff like, "You know what? I got a job. I got to go out. I got a job. I got to go go out and do my job. I got to play in tune. I got to get up on stage. I got to, you know, pay for my mortgage. You know, I got to do. I got to do all these things. It's nice to hear an artist talk about that sometimes. Well, I mean, in, you know, I mean, it's. Um... I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe it's false modesty or something, or maybe it's just kind of like I don't know. Duly noting certain aspects of like what it is that's going on that maybe I don't know. I feel like you know, because whatever you know, people are always getting you know all kinds of ego strokes from people, or people are kind of like pontificating about their you know their sort of amazing view they have there as the artist and that's all valid but it's just like yeah but what about the part where i don't know you're just you know you got like a you have like a relationship with with the people that are patronizing you it's like yeah the thing do the thing do the thing that you do yeah here here we go here's some money do it again (laughs) yeah there's that whole kind of like you know it doesn't exist in a vacuum 
You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, I mean, that was the whole reason to be in a band is like to not work a straight job. I mean, you know, obviously there's the love of music. I, I, I'm not trying to say that wasn't part of it, but in terms of like, okay, what's the goal here? Okay, do I get to quit the straight job? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can give my notice today. Awesome. Yeah, haven't looked, haven't looked back since, and neither has anyone else. The band It's just sort of like that's sort of like the main thing. Yeah, we got this shitty J job, you know. But yeah. like when we, when we make it, yeah, when we get the record deal or whatever it yeah. is that gets us out of town. Yeah, that we don't, we can't work a straight job. We can't, I can't show up tomorrow morning at eight o'clock anymore because it's like I gotta go, gotta go to Amsterdam and play in a club or whatever even if it's like for small money if it's like enough to pay yeah. rent if it's enough to like clothe myself and to feed myself yeah great it's like okay all right we're in we're in and you know there's no desire to go back to any other paradigm you know what i mean it's just like ah, i'm in the club and i'm not gonna, I'm gonna stay in this club as long as i can no one's gonna kick me out i don't care if i'm not hip <laughs> anymore i don't care if i'm like shadow my former self don't care if i'm repeating myself don't care if it's sad whatever man i ain't doing i ain't doing freaking medleys here yeah you know what i mean it's just like whatever i'll yeah. try to keep it pure you know but yeah. you know it's like i don't care whatever man did you but get the to people here people here oh, so i got that no day job, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. What did you get to quit? Can you tell me that? What's that? Did you get to quit something before you did this? Did you get to quit a day oh, job? Yeah. yeah what know. was it? Can you tell me what it was? Yeah, shit, warehouse, you know. So I worked at one warehouse and Joey worked at another warehouse down the down the alley, you know. So. Um, and you got to do it? You got to come in and go, hey, man, like I'm not coming in anymore. I'm going on the road? Right, yeah, exactly. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was, uh, it was a good feeling. It was... Uh, it was a good feeling, and uh, but I mean, I, that's what I thought you were supposed to. I mean, you know, it's, 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 I probably didn't have any business quitting at that particular moment. You know what I mean? I probably yeah. it wasn't necessarily financially sensible to like quit at that particular junction, but it was like seeing the artwork from the sleeve. You know what I mean? If the thing was going to come out, the mini LP import, whatever. It's like I wasn't gonna, wasn't like that was gonna like make me any money necessarily, and it did not. Yeah, but. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. That's the small details. It, I get to get in a van and drive somewhere out of this town, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, great. Done. You know. I mean, you know, yeah. Toronto was probably one of the first places that we came when we got out of town. Really? Yeah, Silver Dollar Club. Right. Now, no longer there. Okay. Yeah. Got, got so torn down. What are we, five years ago? Got paid 200 bucks. I remember the guy. Some, like, you know, old guy with a cigar, like, oh, yeah, you're the bag. And he's counting out the... Twenty dollar bills to me, two hundred bucks, and I was like, "Yes, two hundred bucks, yes." That's I mean, it's like filled up the gas tank. Yeah, drive back to the states or wherever we were going. You know, the next show. So, uh, you know, it was like validation. So, I mean, obviously, it ain't gonna always work on that level. You can't always just make it on two hundred bucks a night. But yeah, but that's but that's, know, that's that's two or three days working at a warehouse. By the way, two hundred. Yeah. Oh, totally. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know. That's good. And, and like, it's good that you kept it up because you and I, I'm not going to say any names. What am I going to do? Say a name? Like, we both know bands that are, you know, they forget that. They get up, you know, and they'll say, oh, I don't want to play. And no disrespect to anybody, but they you know they don't want to play the big song. You know, they don't want to play the hit. They don't want to, they don't want to do this. They want to do that. You, should, you know, you're, you're saying that there's a certain joy in just getting up and doing it. You get to, you get to do it. Yeah, although I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with you just slightly in that Please. I support the confrontational artist who's like, whatever, has got a stick up his ass, and he's like, no, I'm not playing the whatever. Yeah. I'm going to do my opera right now. I mean, you know, peep, the audience might not like it, and, it, you know, it might end up uh, haunting him, you know what I mean, in more way than one, more, more than one way, um, if, if he were persist to be difficult, you know what I mean? But I like difficult artists. Like, I don't like, I don't have any expectations. It's like, if they play all the hits, it's like, awesome. They played everything I, but if they don't, I'm like, okay, well, they're, I mean, some people are better at it than others. Some people are really good at being confrontational and being really um, difficult or whatever. And they can even like be, make that its own entertainment. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And so I, I, I really admire that when people can pull it off on that level. But you do them. I mean, sometimes we we have a little bit. We're not totally like um, playing to the audience, but we just don't. We don't have that much of an issue with like playing the popular songs or whatever. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, we. Well, yeah, it's not like we have a. There's not any baggage. Yeah. You know, associated with said number. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. So we played the Where's My Mind and the whatever. We got like we don't. We never really had a hit. So yeah. 
we're lucky in that regard. We just have to hit like, you know, there's about, you know, five or ten songs. It's like if we touch some of those every night, it's like eh, everyone's pretty happy. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, and they know we're going to play some other stuff that they're not going to necessarily get or whatever or that we don't even get you know yeah <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. well that exists we did we didn't record this you know what we, uh, we should probably play it for the people <laughs> we did spend all this time on it my buddy says that he says that uh you can always tell it's a new song he's, he's like he's a guy who has had like a couple of big hits in canada and he says uh i can always tell it's a new song because they start clapping about 20 seconds before the song is over oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know the last couple of uh-huh yeah, yeah. That, that kind of thing you know yeah i mean um that's good though i mean you could not. You could not do them. People, people, you know, they become albatrosses around people's neck. That's good. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, uh, it's, I don't know. I'm, I, yeah. I'm freezing here, man. I'm freezing. Can we, can we play the bass or just take a listen? a little bit of Pixies with Debaser from the record from 89, Do Little, a record that turned 30 this year. 30 years old. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I made it, I, I realized, because I, I got, uh, sometimes, uh, like, not, not today, I only got one layer of Debaser on, but last night on the way to the show, I had three layers of, uh, it's this perfume called Debaser. Mm-hmm made out of some outfit in Brooklyn or whatever, you know. Yeah. And uh, whatever, it's, the description is like, you know, Black Francis wailing on a hot August night or some, I don't know, whatever. It's a perfume because it's of a your perfume, song? Yeah, because it's called, it's called the bass. Right. Know? So I bought it. I bought everything. I said, give me the, give me the perfume, give me the, 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 the body wash, give yeah. me the, the lotion. So I do the body wash first. Yeah. Then I do the, <laughs> then I do the lotion, right? And even though I prefer uh, a, uh, you know, uh, whatever, more masculine designed uh, product, like a, an aftershave with a lot of alcohol in it. I like the sting of all that. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, used it's to. old school, you know. Like that. But, uh, you know, so per parfum, you know what I mean, is this one is a kind of an oil base. So, you know, and I'm just learning about like placing it on the right vein or whatever so that it pulses or whatever. If I've over applied. Mm. Today I apologize. Mm. I'm still learning how to apply the perfume, but today I'm the same outfit. Though they made this other perfume called uh, I don't know, it's called like whose jacket is it or something like some crazy name like that. But but it's uh, Albert Einstein's leather jacket. Oh, you know they someone they went to Christie's and they bought the jacket and then they built this they built this perfume based on whatever the, you know, this pipe tobacco and the leather and whatever right. else is going on there. And, and you smell your own, you smell the debaser perfume and you go, yeah, that's what I, that's, that's what that song felt like. I don't know. I, you <laughs> that's know, what that's, that's I what I wrote that song I think for. it's cute, you know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah. anyway, but I'm, 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 I bought in. I mean, I got, I even got the debaser bumper sticker on my old car, you know what I mean? There's this nightclub uh, in Stockholm it's closed down a couple of times. It's closed down now. It doesn't exist anymore. But there's been a couple of incarnations of this nightclub called Debaser. And, uh, yeah, so then whenever they gave me a bumper sticker. So yeah, it's like, yeah, what the hell? I stuck it on my car. I would uh, love to be the person behind you going, like, did that sticker say Debaser? Is that Black Francis? <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow. Fair enough. Yeah. How about the paint? So I got the perfume yeah. Debaser. Yeah. I got the bumper sticker. I got a T-shirt. The T-shirt's a little... A little tight. I don't really wear it. It's from this from this bar down in um, Spain called the Baser, mm. and uh, so I got a the Baser T-shirt from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got you got you got a lot. You got a whole closet like Superman. Oh, I got the Baser artwork too from the a friend of mine. She's an artist who does. Uh, she works. Uh, her name's uh, Kate Hester. She does uh, masking tape uh, art. Oh yeah. She uses black, usually black masking tape. Anyway, she did a scene from when she and Andalu the film that. The baser is sort of about, but um, she made me a piece, you know, hangs in my house, you know. So I got a lot of yeah. That song actually was starting to like pay some dividends, you know, not in the cash necessarily, ah, but cultural impact. But cultural impact, yeah, exactly, you're absolutely exactly, right. yeah. So you're, you're you're a business man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I got all I got all I mean, Christmas gifts this year. 
There might be <laughs> there might be a lot of the base of perfume going on. Honey, I hope, you, I hope you like the base of perfume because I bought four crates of it. <laughs> yeah, right now. By the way, you're paying for it. I want to point out in my in my fantasy of this. What's that? In my mind, you're paying for this perfume. Oh, I would never no. let on to the young ladies working at the perfume shop that I was, I am he. You know, I would never do that. You're not going to come in and be like, you no, know, hey, it'd hey, be so, hey, Linda, no. guess who wrote that? Yeah. This no. guy right here. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I just, I just, <laughs> I just paid. I just like, you know, I'm just, yeah, I'll just be the middle right. aged dude who's like, why is this guy buying all this perfume, you know? Anyway. But, but do you still do that one? Do you still feel good when you do that one? What? The Debaser song? If there's one song I'm a little tired of playing, it's that one. Why? I don't know. It's just, it's probably just because it's achieved a certain kind of status that it's kind of like it has to be played every night. You know, not every. It doesn't have to be. We don't play it every night, but lately it's kind of we. It's a good way to end the show. So lately we've been ending it, the show with that. You know, and it seems to work really well. So we're not fighting it. But I think just I just mean temporarily. I'm a little burned. Yeah. I'm just a little because it's placement. We've let it sort of settle there in the ultimate position there at the end of the night, and uh, I'm just burning yeah. out on that particular. I mean, it'll be fine next year. It'll I know what you mean, else. but you're also like you're, you're looking at the set list because you have 40 songs to try and remember. We don't we don't do a set list. It's like it's just like you're kidding me, really? 40 yeah. songs a night and you don't write a set list? No, I mean there's like the jar of the memory. There's a master list back there on the drums that I can peek at if I can't think of a song. You know what I mean? But the set list thing, um, you're just calling it out. Yeah, yeah, we got we just call them out. We got little hand signals and stuff, and we just kind of go, you know, we kind of flash something or, what? Make, and then then we go into the. What next do you one. mean? You so you tell me the truth? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, yeah, a little like you know, like Valoria is like that, you know, you know, uh, plan on a sound like, you know, it's like that, you know, um, motorway to Roswell, it's like uh, really? like you're holding a steering wheel, you know. I can't wait um, to read the YouTube comments on that. Like, he totally tricked that interviewer into thinking that he had all those signs for the. No, no, we don't got them for all the songs, but like for the ones that we do, we, we, we you know. That's cool. Uh, we, 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 you know, they, 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 the more and more they develop gouge, just like we make the gouge, like, you know, gouge on your eyeballs. We go like, uh, you know, we like flick our fingers over our eyes like that, like you're, like you're gouging your eye out. That's gouge away. Yeah. You know. Do you still, any, any you're not sick of? Anyone you'll never get sick of, you don't think? You look forward to it? Any any you look forward to every night playing? That you've been playing for ages? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's all the moment, you know what I mean? Because you don't really know how it's going to go anyway. We might You might train wreck the song, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we do that sometimes. How about the painting? What does the painting give you? Because it feels what like we, we've been talking about, like, you know, you know, I'm in a band. I don't want to work in a warehouse anymore. I'm going to go on the road. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to play in tune. I'm going to charge cover. People are going to come in and see me. I'm going to be able to pay my mortgage. And it feels like the painting you're able to do feels like a real, like, soul artistic expression for you, kind of away from all of that. You mean painting, painting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do that a lot. Sometimes I do it on the road. I did on the last tour. Where do you, where do you, in your hotel? Mm-hmm. Bring an easel? No, nah, no, nah, I don't really use easels, but... Um, that's how dumb I am, by the way, about painting, that that's how I assume all painting is no, done. No, no, I mean, like it's Bob, a vertical like position is how Ross. you approach a canvas, usually, unless you paint on it. If it's small, you can go on a table, you know? So I usually use tables for... But I, you just, you just lean against a wall if it's big enough, you know, you just lean it, just put it up on the top of a chair or something if you need to have it higher, you know? But... Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really use easels, but um, yeah, yeah, I do that a lot. You know, that's does, does that's that give good. does that give you something? Gives me yeah, it's escape. Yeah, escape. Just get the hell away from. There's no one there. You know what I mean? It's just me. It's just like me and Charles Mingus or whatever I'm listening to. You know what I mean? And and I can do that all. Day. I just like send my kids off to school in the morning, and then I go down and and paint, and then that's all I do, pretty much. And, uh, yeah, I get to listen to a lot of music that way, I guess, you know, so that's nice. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not good or anything. I mean, I'm just, I just, I just do it, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I like it, man. Like, <clears throat> Well, I recommend it for anybody, really. I mean, you know, it's like a pretty uh, old thing to do. You know, it's pretty primal. You know, it's like pigment on, the, on your finger or on a stick and you make a mark on something. You know, it's like a... You can analyze it all day long, but 
it's like, no, it's just like, just make, it's just what people do. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's just what people, oh, I'm not artistic. I'm not very creative. I'm not very good. Shut up. Just do it. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. it's just like, would you tell that to a little kid? It's like, no, you give them, here's some paper and here's some pencils. Like, yeah. just go nuts. You know, so Linda, like, you know the artist Linda Berry? I don't know. She's like a comic artist. She was like in with Matt Groening in the '80s and stuff like that. But mm. She's an incredible graphic, like, you know, like comic artist, graphic artist. And I had her on a little while ago. Again, I'm Larry King, and she said, "I when you're eight years old, someone usually tells you, hey, that that your hands don't look very good that you drew there, or your feet don't look really good there, and you just spend the rest of your life thinking that you're uncreative. It's ridiculous." Uh, yeah, I mean, I I hear stories like that from. I, I've never been discouraged uh, from. From uh, so I lucked out, uh, so I've never uh, been you, discouraged about uh, things like uh, creativity or painting or yeah. m- making music or whatever. But, no one's ever really uh, tried to like micromanage that, you know. Uh, so that's that's good. See, and you, so if you're if you have a, if you if you were teaching in art class or you're teaching a class or you've got people in your charge or whatever, it's just it's good to not if you can be that. Ad- if you can be that progressive, don't try to micromanage them. Of course, you know, just let, just let them make a mark. You know, and uh, that's what it's all about. And um, I tell you why I think it's good because I think about the, the friends of mine who tour. I know that. Well, like I don't, I don't want to, I don't want, no, I don't want to get into it. But like I know that like the hours after the show, in the hotel room, mm-hmm. and sometimes the hours before the show in the hotel room are mm-hmm. some of the dangerous hours for the brain of a musician, right? Especially when you get off and there's a big crowd screaming at you and you come in the office and you're in your quiet hotel room and Law and Order's on TV, you know, what are you going to do? Painting seems to be a good something, you know, something to do. I, I have friends of mine who write novels when they're on the road too, right? Yeah, it's good to find something you can obsess on, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's, it's not harmful to your health other than, you know, you might stay up too late or you might avoid doing other things, you know what I mean? You might... You might isolate, you know what I mean, from, from other people. So I suppose that it, it, maybe it could be a little bit negative. But I personally, I really like obsessing on it, you know. And then you got, you got your little, you got a special suitcase, you know, with all the art supplies in it, you know. Yeah, but, it, yeah. And, but it's not the booze and drugs suitcase for the right. hotel room. Yeah? Right, right, that's yeah. the That's the nice thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and... Um, and you paint way better if you don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> as fun as it is to combine, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I, I, I would enjoy having a glass of wine or something while painting. But you know, I haven't been drinking lately either. You know, so uh, and then I was like, oh, am I not gonna like painting so much now? And it's like, oh no, I'm, I'm fine with it. You know, yeah. I just, you just kind of obsess on it, and that's what it's all about. Painting for me, anyway, is just obsessing. You know, and, and but in a positive way. So your so something like you know your ruminations can uh, have a they can bear fruit instead of just like f- screwing you up they can kind of like it's like oh wow that looks great Charles that thing that you made what's that what's that all about you know what I mean it's like well you know I know it's orange and blue and it's green whatever but but you know you know if it was if it was just a rumination in your mind you know what I mean it would have affected your personality maybe you know what I mean and you'd just be like Charles I can't seem to like. <laughs> <laughs> get through to you like where are you yeah, man yeah. where are you you know sorry man I've just been ruminating here in my head Yeah, and I'm like I can't even barely get a sentence out you know what I mean but then if you got something like painting or you know what other creative pursuits yeah playing but playing we're talking about painting it'd yeah. be like, oh, there's, there's all my rumination you don't need to tell anyone that yeah. but that's what you know you just ruminate yeah. obsess over and over do it do it do it do it do it and uh, it's, it's a good thing I think I like the record too congrats on it Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I guess I guess we made it about a year ago now. You're still talking about it. You know, when uh, not too much. I mean, I just. I mean, you know, I just emailed the manager the other day. So, all right, that's it. I'm done. No more interviews. This like I'm officially done. Yeah. No more interviews. Period. Yeah. I don't care what it is. I am done. He said, "Well, okay." I think there's two th- radio things up in Canada. <laughs> 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 Shit. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So they, I, all right, I'll do that. Fine. I had previously agreed to that. I'm not going to back out of that. I'm not, I'm not going to be a total jerk. I'm glad, I'm glad you so made So I'm here. I'm here. Glad you made all an right? exception. He sent you a picture of the stand-up cutout of me, and you went, all right, that guy looks all right. 
So yeah, I yeah. I agreed I would be here. So I am here. You know I, that's I'm how not, I'm not. I think I've fairly good attitude. I don't think I'm right. I mean, you kidding is, me? Does the attitude seem okay? You kidding me? It's not too not too cranky or whatever. I'm having a great time. Are you having a good okay. time? All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm having a good time too. This was okay. really fun. Thanks for uh, having <clears> a. <throat> By the way, um, I said I was going to be here, so I'm here. The first line of most of my dates, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, eh? Yeah, sure thing.